This conference will now be recorded. What is that we are doing? Uh, working on case classes in the last session. And uh, that's, we have discussed uh, most of the topics, like the comparison of case class and uh, case class versus regular class. And the object immutability in case class. And then uh, also we have seen uh, how to perform structural comparison and reference comparison. Between this uh, case class and in this uh, which one regular class we have seen on that, and we have seen something like copy method, uh, copying method, yeah. and uh, you know right, it is used to perform copying means uh, it's more or less uh, creates a, a copy of existing copy with the same parameters or with the existing object with same parameters or with uh, different parameters. Now here also you are saying, uh, this is one thing we can see together. What they were saying is, uh, if required, we can also, you can change the constructor arguments as well. Because if you see here, uh, the first case, uh, if you look at here, in the message we have sender, recipient and body. And, uh, the second example you can see here what they were doing here they were using here uh, one is sender and the other one is the uh, recipient and you don't have body here can you see if you want you can uh, what is that uh, you can modify this number of parameters as well maybe we'll quickly check this and uh, move to the next topic okay so this is simple idea about uh, case classes and we have to do the pattern matching with case classes that is one more use case uh, remaining for us uh, and of course apart from that uh, let's see if we have anything important to cover apply anyhow case class internally uses apply and unapply it's more like companion object uh, the topic is more or less like companion object. and you know about companion object you know? so what is companion object uh, what goes inside companion object and how it works. We have discussed it uh, somewhere in the last session. As well. okay. Last session is not exactly the last session. Come type back. That is there in YouTube as well. So mutator methods means like getters and setters. I used to keep, uh, you know, keep telling this. Uh, so that is mutators. So this fields of case class, as you know, right, we have discussed it number of times. Uh, when you create uh, case class, we have some parameters here, okay, with the case class name. And these fields by default, they are public methods and they are, uh, you know, public and uh, immutable. They are of val type. And these parameters are of val type, then uh, we get this uh, getter methods. We don't have setters for val methods because we, uh, these are immutable. When a variable is immutable, for such variables here, if there are parameters to constructor then the getter is created and we have seen this uh, in the very beginning of when we discussed this constructor topic we had a discussion on that we have seen it i have shown in the command prompt uh, how this uh, mutator methods like setters and getters are created mutator means they will cause some change to the uh, object or they will try to get some data from the object got it right there. So such methods are mutated and uh, here, you know, as the parameters of uh, case class are by default uh, immutable, and even the object is immutable and public. The parameters are also public. We have discussed this. Uh, for this wild type of parameters, that is automatically created. Suppose when I try to call a, a, a parameter like this, my uh, case class uh, reference, then internally getter method is called. Okay. Is it clear for all of you? So, this is a reassignment. You cannot reassign. Okay, next one. This is apply and uh, anyhow, unapply is also 
there is nothing much I would like to talk to because you know how to use unemployed as well. Again, a similar discussion we had a very detailed discussion and comparing of it. So that's why right now uh, we will skip this for now. Okay. Anyhow, we had that detailed discussion. If you want to know more about this, you can go back to the video and please uh, if you can go through that uh, the companion object. Of I mean, we had a discussion, so we are skipping this. Srikanth is uh, somehow she is saying still copying. We have completed. See, he is a little frustrated there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there is a small information more about copy method there. That's why. Right. You can see here, right? You have a case class here, and in this case class, uh, how many parameters are there here? Uh, two parameters. But we can modify that. We can create uh, exactly the same number of parameters. That is this. Or we can choose to, what we can do? We can choose to pass less number of parameters. I didn't check it for more number of parameters. We can quickly check it. I'm not taking much time here, uh, Srikanth. Uh, I don't want to spend more time on copy method again. Just a cross check, like, you know, if we can uh, give different parameters, with the less number of parameters and more number of parameters will it work or not or uh, we have to take it only what is that uh, that is one more we have to take maximum just two parameters uh, as per declaration in case class that is what we quickly check it not now and equals and hash code we had discussed yesterday right and to string anyhow we don't need it now so this is simple walkthrough now, one more quick example on this is, uh, what is it? Uh, now I need to talk about pattern matching. So before that, uh, I just want to quickly test it. Suppose I have, yeah. So now here, uh, suppose I say, we can also assign like this, A equal to, this is more like, uh, Applying a named parameters topic, okay. A equal to some 10, B equal to some 20. We can pass like this, then we can just test it. This is one thing. Suppose, uh, can I pass some C equal to 30? That is the next question. So it's not accepting because probably what I can tell is as the case class has uh, declared the maximum parameters we can pass is uh, two parameters. But we can choose to have just uh, how many here? Uh, maybe I can uh, choose to have what is that uh, one parameter which will accept that. But I cannot uh, probably if I try to take uh, what is that B equal to 20 and uh, some C equal to 30. Probably this is not working here. And it is saying what? Too many arguments. Can you see here for method copy? Why too many arguments? Because here in the case class, we have two parameters and we cannot have three parameters here. Whereas, what can I do? I can give to one parameter. I can choose to reduce the number of parameters here. So that will work for us. Okay. Now, if you see uh, the third one, what's happening here? This is treated as a, uh, what is that now? Can you see here now? The first parameter is treated as 10 and the second one is by default it is taking it as 2. Got it right? Means sir, this, this is going to get modified. The first parameter is getting modified. The second one is used as is. This is what we call as is. Got it right? Then. So means we can also choose to reduce number of parameters when you are applying copy. Right? Not the, the exact number of parameters. There are three cases. One. We can pass it uh, the parameters as it is. Two, we can uh, pass different values with the uh, copy and together creating a different construct, different uh, object. Third one, what is third one here? We can also choose to reduce number of, uh, you know, choose to reduce number of parameters here. Instead of passing two, I can choose to pass one. And uh, here, the second parameter is automatically taken from the existing object. So this is the third one. So in this way, case class also can have another option here. Got it right. So that's it. This is about this. We are done with this.
got it right i just want to quickly update on this point so next one so let's get into the discussion of uh, next topic that is uh, pattern matching with case cases this is one of the you know when you look into the case class uh, usage when you when you look into that how case class is really useful the responsibilities of case class one of the very important thing uh, you observe is uh, pattern matching now if you see here i told you again this you know this pattern matching this is not new for you because we have discussed pattern matching with even option class answer but now let us have a, a clear, clear idea a quick idea about how this case class can be used in pattern matching okay if you look at this example we are having so many things in this code here so one thing is there are a couple of uh, things in this code which you may don't know but you don't need to understand what of most of this just get an idea get the concept leave that leave the rest of the part okay that we will discuss uh, once we got the inheritance uh, this uh, and there we have a, we have a try topic separate we'll discuss this again for one minute. so but now just have a quick idea there is one more important point uh, which was introduced in this topic which we, we which is not discussed earlier we know we have discussed about case class all of you know this but we didn't we didn't discuss something called case object can you see here this is a keyword again this is a keyword again you know right where where did you see that object keyword where did you you, you know observe when do you use this uh, object keyword any any idea when did we use it uh, folks while creating single an object we use the object keyword right suppose you see here this uh, this example here we use object with uh, this single term so where you put your main inside that always you know this very well so that is normal object we can also declare something called case object so we have seen case class like a normal class now there is something like a case object similar to normal object the difference between normal object and case object is uh, there are few extra features with the case object okay if you go and look at the case object it has few more extra features what is that uh, one thing you can see here one thing is uh, a case class with no arguments this, this doesn't take arguments uh, is declared as case object usually case class has arguments or case class has parameters whereas case object uh, doesn't take parameters that is one thing. so this is one important uh, point you have to keep in mind second thing is uh, by default uh, case object is serializable what is it case object is a serializable and you can ask me a question what is the serializable source okay if it, if it, does, it doesn't have parameters we understand it it's, a, it's something with the default uh, case class which looks like a default one without parameters we agree sir that is fine for us but you are saying serializable this is another important point what is that case object is serializable by default whereas a normal object uh, you can see probably this is not serializable what they but what they were saying here they were saying that case object is serializable what do you mean by serializable sir serializable means it's simple, something like this it we when you when an object is serializable so what happens is uh, when object is serializable what happens is uh, we can write that object to a file or you can read it from a file suppose if you want to write an object as it is to a file then that object object in sense the class of that object must implement something called serializable interface it's something like this sir a quick idea for you maybe so that you get some understanding suppose i have a class like this uh, just only for your understanding sir. Uh, here we don't have that implements 
So usually it looks like this. I will show you with Java terminology so that it should be a quick idea now. So one minute. I'm showing in a Java terminology. I have a class like this, uh, some class, some A, and I can say implements. There is something called implements in uh, Java. If an inter if it is an interface, then we implement that in a class. If it is a class, then we extend it to another class. It's a kind of inheritance, uh, and uh, we implement like this an interface. Interface is similar to trite in uh, Scala. Okay. Now, this class extends serializable. I've created I created an object in Java like this. I'm just showing you if you can, or you are just understanding. Okay. Now. This object which I created here is a serializable object because, you know, sir, what's happening here? This class A implements what, sir? It's a, it implements a serializable interface. Now, if class implements serializable interface, what happens here? The object of this class becomes a serializable. And what happens when it is serializable? Then I can write this object to a file, or I can read this object from a file. So I can perform file processing this on this object uh, only when I implement this serializable. Otherwise, uh, you get an exception saying that unserializable exception. So that serializable automatically happens for our case object. You don't need to do do anything here. You don't need to extend any try it here. Or you don't need to do any such sort of thing here. Are you following so now? You don't need to do any such thing here, sir. Then, by default, case object is serialized. And all this has to happen internally if it is Java. Even here also the same thing happens because your scalar code in turn gets converted to Java. When it gets converted to Java, definitely what happens, sir? A similar kind of code is generated for this case object. So when it is uh, serializable, what happens? Uh, now an object is serializable, it can be written to a file or it can be write or read from a file. You got it right. And that's what we call serialization. This is a simple and uh, Quick understanding. That's all. You don't need all this now. If you want, uh, we'll see it uh, with the example a little later. Let me finish this case class today. I don't want to again push it to the next class. So let us end this journey of case class today. Okay. But all these are useful scenarios. Whatever we discuss, uh, we cannot. Uh, what is that? Uh, we cannot exclude anything. Today my lead is. Uh, updating my colleagues saying that uh, all these things are very useful if you learn it it's a good learning experience so that uh, it helps to your career got it right uh. so means what we are doing some scalar coding right now we got an opportunity to go through the scalar code. and he is updating that now we are doing all that uh, in our sessions uh, with uh, a deeper analysis of each and every got it right uh. so these are all Important uh, points we need to learn in scale. Very important, sir. So this is idea about case object. Got it right? Now you know about case class. Suddenly, suddenly at the end in the climax, we came and we came to know or we got introduced something new, which is called case object. It means similar to case class, we have a case object as well. The difference is it doesn't usually Take parameters. Okay, second thing is what it is serializable by default. And such thing is called as what, sir? We call it as a good sub. We can do, we can have it, have, it might have more features for now. Just understand this, sir. We can talk more on it uh, maybe once we finish inheritance and polymer. That, that's the idea about this. Now, when we are doing a small example of pattern matching with both case class and case object. So you see an example here, sir. It's, this is a simple and straightforward. We didn't take anything really tough example. When you look at it, 
I took one triad, super triad. Triad is nothing but uh, similar to class. It's, it's usually what happens is uh, we just declare like this. You can see here uh, with the triad keyword and the triad name. We we discuss more on it. So it might have some abstract methods. Usually triad is used to declare some abstract methods, and it acts as a super class always. You know, right? Uh, super class means a parent class. For now, just remember. The advantage of using these triads are uh, this. Uh, what is that uh, super triad example here? Is uh, the advantage is uh, if you use this, uh, it inculcates something called uh, loose coupling. What is that? Uh, it involves something called loose coupling. Do you understand? What is loose coupling? We can reduce the dependency of one object on another object with the concept of what we call loose coupling. See, whenever we use, I talk more on that when we go to the triad topic because here we are, our topic is not triad here. Okay, it's our topic is more or less case case class and case object. So how do how do we apply that in pattern matching? That is our topic, sir. I'll talk more on this, but I'm just giving a quick understanding. Right is something like a class. Usually, it has methods with abstract methods. If, if you want, you can have even you know concrete methods. Concrete methods means methods with body. Abstract methods means methods without body. But for now, we can also have a try without any methods as well, like this. So you got it right. Now I declare a try it here. What is that try it? Try it is like an interface. If you go to Java, it's like an interface. In in, in Python, sorry, in Scala, try it is a try, which is used to declare abstract methods. Got it right? And, and uh, you you may or may not declare abstract methods in try. It might also have some normal methods. So that is point one. Maybe if you don't understand, just remember, try it is some super class for now. You, but for now, we are not implementing any abstract methods, or we are not using any concrete methods in try. But we are just declaring a simple try without any parameters as well. Usually, I don't think uh, we declare parameters in try. We'll see more on this when we go there. Okay, I'm just removing, just taking this link. Try it is like the interface. Usually, why do we need it? Which has some abstract and uh, non abstract methods. What do you mean by abstract, sir? Abstract means methods without body. Non abstract or concrete methods means methods with body. This kind of methods, like main, you can see here, this main is a concrete method, something like that. This this method is a concrete method, something like this, which has a body you can see there. And it is fine if a trite doesn't have a body because because we have seen even class doesn't need a body in scale. And it is fine not to have any abstract methods inside. Even it is fine for a class even for uh, in scale, not just for uh, trite. But a trite. And why do we need trites? Trites involves something called what is that? Term? Involves just quick understanding. Involves something called loose coupling. This is one of the famous uh, technical concept in uh, this uh, OOP, object oriented uh, programming. One of the best uh, use case in object oriented programming. Loose coupling and tight coupling. Difference is simple, sir. When you say it is a, it has loose coupling, it reduces dependency of one object on another object. Again, you might have a question how it happens. We should see with examples. So don't worry. We will we will work on these all these use cases when we go to the trite topic more than spending our time. Okay. So I will just conclude it saying that loose coupling is nothing but reduces dependency on dependency of one object or another object. And this is one of the best programming practice. 
and trites are used okay to inculcate that loose coupling here it means to involve that loose coupling if you want to implement that loose coupling definitely the triads and uh, class approach is one of the best approach here now if you see i have declared one trial naming it as super trial and you can name as you like okay depends on the requirement your trait can be a person, your trait can be an animal, your trait can be anything. Okay, for now, I am just making it a pseudo trait without any parameters or without any, uh, what is it, uh, abstract methods. Got it right. That is one thing. Usually, I don't think we take parameters with the traits, but we'll cross check all that when we go to the trait stuff. That is point one. Point two. Now I have a case class with two parameters. Now I am extending this super trait uh, from this uh, to this case class. Our case class one extends trait, case class two extends trait. Means what is that? We are inheriting this super trait to, to the subclasses. Whenever we use extends, means this is an inheritance. Means this is a child class. This is a parent. Okay, as trait doesn't have any method, it's, we don't need to overwrite here, overwrite here. Okay, what is that we'll discuss when we go to the trite topic. We'll have a very detailed discussion. It's also interesting. And then, uh, all of a sudden, we are seeing something like case object. It's an instead of case class, means what? Uh, even we have case objects in, where in scale, like case classes. If case class is something immutable and have public parameters, a case object is what is that? It is something which is serializable by default. And usually it doesn't take parameters. It is something default. And now we are extending even the object. So this is a, this case objects are very useful when you are trying to do the pattern matching, when you are implementing pattern matching their case objects are really useful to implement some meaningful coding, meaningful comparison. Got it right. So this is idea about this one. What did we do, sir? We declared a trite here and we are trying to extend it to other, other classes and objects here, case classes and case objects. Now what's happening, there is a relation here. One thing about this use case is, uh, if trite is a super class, you know, if I create an object for case class one, case class two, then our case object. By default, this is an object, no, nothing to worry about. You can straight, straight away use this. You don't need to create object for this. But for, uh, for the other two, as they were classes, we create objects for them. But still the point is this super this super class trait can refer the reference of this this super class can refer to the subclass objects it can refer to case class one it can refers to case class two it can refer to case object in fact uh, all the subclasses are of super trite type this trite type or super trite it's like this a big quick example what is that suppose you know, just let's take a quick family example, okay, filmy example here. You know, the famous filmy backgrounds in India, because we are Indians, I'm just taking that. Got it right. So as we are in South India, you can take some very well-known family. Let's talk about the family graph. You know, when I say Naga Chaitanya, or when I say Nagarjuna, or when I say, you know, somebody else in the next generation as well. So automatically, all these are belonging to whom? Nageshwara. We, some, we call them as Akineni because uh, this Akineni, I am not Akineni family fan, okay? I am just giving an idea. So what is that? Uh, Nagarjuna is Akineni type. Even Nagachaitanya is Akineni type. Similarly, if you talk about other examples, okay, you can take Amitabh Bachchan. Amitabh Bachchan, that Bachchan family, if you take it, uh, his father has Bachchan. The, from that Bachchan, Amitabh Bachchan came. From that Bachchan, which came, who came? Abhishek Bachchan came there. 
means all these are belonging to which type amitabh bachchan or abhishek bachchan or, or any other bachchan at the top level at, at the bottom level sorry belonging to a bachchan family means so they belong to a class called bachchan and from that bachchan all these subclasses are inherited what it right means all this case class 1 case class 2 case object are of super tribe type because they are inheriting from that what it right so these are all belong to this so one important thing is a reference of this can refer to this subclass reference suppose i can create an object for case class 1 like this so something like uh, what we can do usually how we are creating some var space some uh, reference colon this can be a this reference can be of this type i am just showing you now it can be super type then it can refer to case class 1 of one comma the same go super type i am creating one more reference so reference to reference one can refer to this first object reference two is referring to second object and even you can take one more which can refer to this case object as well. okay are you following sir are you getting an idea yes sir no sir getting an idea and all these are of what type sir this uh, case class one case class two case object even you can define if you want you can also declare like this sir have space sir. Reference three colon in is it super triad and even you can assign the third also sir third one is also which type sir super triad type so you can say case object like this in this way a super class reference if uh, now here as there is a concept of what is that uh, a triad and uh, what is this now these are classes now as we are inheriting these classes from triad this becomes what we can implement a kind of loose coupling here all these objects which are extended from triad can be referred by the references of this super triad this this concept involves something called loose coupling in this way we can reduce the dependency of one object on another object i can reduce dependency of case class 1 on case class 2 or on this one this kind of a approach or methodology will reduces the level of dependency between one object to another object and to do more introspection we will do it in right form now again i am just telling you this is just a, a quick understanding for implementing this pattern matching that's all we are in case class topic let me finish it today okay but we will play with lot of things i will explain loose coupling how you can have loosely coupled objects how we can have tightly coupled objects sir. we will see all that sir we are not going to leave it you should have a little patience that sir i i, I am ready to explain all that even the serializable topic even the poso topic all that okay now this is idea about this one sir. got it right now here and finally we are coming back to this we can also have objects like this sir now what's happening if you see here to our surprise all the references are of a super triad which are pointing to this maybe if you are a little doubtful if you want to test it if you ask me sir we will test it first let us take it to this code what do we do right now first declare them here first declare all the case classes and this you you bring it to where all that stuff usually we do the declarations in uh, this object here something like this now if you see here uh, case class 2 has just only uh, one parameter so you just pass some one parameter here if you see here this is working fine so now you can just print it as a ref1 and ref2 ref3 okay. now if you just see the output you know what happens Now look at the result here what's happening here you know very well we get the objects here the first and second and third one is returned as it is you can see it is returning the object with the same object name can you see here so this is simple idea if 
quick idea for you how this works here. Now here, if you see, the reference is, what, who is who's, what reference is this? Whose reference is this? All the references are references of superclass, that is superclass. You can call this parent as superclass as well. In, in just technically, we can call it like that. But if, even though it is trite, while in a regular convention, we can call it as a superclass or parent. Now this parent, whatever it is trite, the reference of that is referring to all the subclass objects. This, this kind of uh, approach or methodology involves or it brings in loose coupling. If you want loose coupling, if you want to provide loose coupling, definitely this is going to work that. And this approach, this, this kind of what is that trite and subclasses extending the trite includes uh, or we can have that loose coupling approach. And usually in uh, if you go to Java, we call it as Pozo Poji model. Poji, Poji Pozo model, sorry. Poji means plain old Java interface. Poji means plain old Java. And here the same thing we implement with trite and classes. I think it's clear for all of you, right? Okay, do you understand it, sir? No, it's is a relation, not has a relation. Somebody is saying has it there. I don't know, Srikant, uh, this is is a relation. When you extend something, it, it is always is a relation. It's not has a relation. You got it right there. Sir, till this point, uh, we had the opportunity to understand so many things, to discuss so many things here. What is it? Uh, see, in this simple session, there is lots of information. What is that? Uh, we, we discussed something with case object and we, we came to know something about serialization and we came to know how serialization is applied and why serialization is applied. We had a discussion on that. Okay. And then we came to understand something like, you know, this, this uh, trite and subclass, subclasses here, uh, subclasses extending trite here. And we came to understand, we came to know about something like uh, loose coupling here and what is the advantage of loose coupling. Uh, what is a trite in brief? Serializable and extends are not same. Okay, serializable is an interface. Extends is a keyword which is used to just inherit a class. That's all. Got it right? Huh? There is a lot of difference. There is a hell of difference here. Okay, when you if you are asking that is serializable and extends is same. Okay. Here in uh, Scala, for both we use extends. There is no implements keyword. That's why. What is that? Uh, Extends and implements uh, behave same in uh, its scalar, but in Java, for interfaces we use implements and for classes we use extends to inherit them. I hope your answer, your question is answered, right? But right. we, on brief, we had a quick idea. Generally, trites can be used to have abstract and non-abstract methods. Why? Why do we need all that? We'll see in the right stuff. But we had an opportunity to understand all that, at least to walk through all these things very quickly. So that's it. Now, finally, we also came to know that we can, when this kind of uh, thing is there, it gives us an opportunity to declare all the references as superclass type, which refer to its uh, subclass objects. Advantage. This kind of approach, what is that? Uh, reduces dependency of uh, one object on another object. Now, going to the example. Look at this. In this example, we have created three case case related things, entities, case entity reason. The first two are classes, second one is an object, case class and case object. The first one has two parameters, second one has one parameter, the third one doesn't have any parameter. Still it's fine. So now going to the example quickly. If you look at it, I just defined one, one method here, case file. Call case, or you can name as you like, sir. You know, right? Whenever uh, we can have a pattern matching with a method as well, like this. So, what we can do, we can implement pattern matching in this concept, in this way also. Right? Leave about this, this part. To look at this, this is more or less uh, we are implementing a, a switch case. 
and this switch case written something and uh, that is uh, you know same to this that that is return type of this is nothing but more or less this is a method call case which takes the parameter of super right uh, takes a parameter of what type sir super right means what uh, when when my parameter is super type you can pass any any one of these three objects to this parameter i can pass case class one i can pass case class two i can pass case object means when i declare like this this becomes a generic generic object sir when, when something is generic it can take you know it can hold any type of data so now this f can accept any of these subclass objects it can accept case class one case class two case object suppose if you have extended more subclasses from this super right then you can pass all those subclass objects to this parameter because this reference just now i have explained just to make you understand this the reference of superclass can refer to any subclass object. Suppose if this parameter is declared as a super right type, then we can pass any of these objects of its subclasses. You understand this, sir? So this is what happens with this method. You can give any name, sir. Name is not something very difficult, not something too important for us. Method name is your choice, sir. Here, if you see method name is choice, but here th this type has to be as as is. We cannot change this super right should be there. But if you want, you can change f to z or f to x. That's your choice. This variable name can be modified. This method name can be defined, changed. That's up to you. But for now, you can continue with this. Okay. So what's happening here, sir? Now we have defined a method with a parameter of super type means super try it means it accepts any of the objects of its subclasses now we are implementing a partial function here defining a pattern matching with switch keys match match is used here now inside this we are taking three cases case the first one is try is the is one is the argument of class one type and we are just trying to implement some extractor here. If you see here, we are just applying what is it? Uh, we are comparing it and we are trying to extract that uh, parameters f and g here. f and g are nothing but uh, by default, this represents this case class. As case class has two parameters, while comparing here, this case object, uh, it can have at most two parameters here. What it types are? Because case class one has two parameters. Maximum two are allowed to declare. Got it right. Because the first object has two. Now I'm trying to extract it from the print here. There is another way we can also apply that get method usually in a case object. But for now, we have seen this scenario as well. I can just do the comparison. If it is satisfied, then I'm trying to extract the values of this case here. That is a A and B, or you can say F and G and sub. Even if it is A B here, A B here at, at the declaration, it doesn't need to be A B in the switch. It can be with some other parameter. It's not necessary that parameters need to be same when we declare at the declaration and when we are using them in the case class. I mean in the this pattern matching. You should have two parameters because that case class has two parameters. Just give that and you try to extract and print it. Now we are doing the comparison pattern matching here for the first object pattern matching for the second object. A second object that just takes one parameter then I am trying to extract that one parameter from the second object. If the case object has one parameter try to extract that one parameter. If it is having two parameters try to extract those two parameters. If it is having no parameter then just display that it doesn't have any What you try that. Now, this is how you define it, sir. and finally, what happens? We are just printing it here itself. Maybe if you want, you can return the results. As well. What you can do, you can return back the result as well. Instead of using print, if you just directly you know apply a concatenation between variables and return it, that can be written. Now, what you are doing now, you are calling this case class method here. 
by passing this object because already classes are defined i can directly pass an object to a method like this why because this case class method call case sorry this call case method takes a parameter of a try time and for it will accept any of its subclass objects so i am passing what is that to this method i am passing first time class one object second time class two object third time case object got it right now what happens in the method here if i call this first time this one then this case class object with two parameters is passed to this and pattern matching happens whichever the object is matching here that print get executed which is matching here the first one obviously the first gets match which gets matched here sir the first one is going to be okay then in the second case the second one second object gets matched the second pattern is going to be matched then we get a in the third time the third pattern is going to be matched then we don't get anything here which we just say no no argument so to test it what we can do copy this, this whole code the methods and get to this already we have this case classes and uh, this case object and this right all this is here our only thing is just we need to add methods one is the main second one is uh, the case class call case sorry call case methods now what i am doing is this is my program what i am doing now i am trying to run this here let me run it can you see that the first case i got 10 and 10 in the second case i got 10 in the third case i got this nor so how this pattern matching here is happening here how is this happening as we know this object is going to be matched with the first pattern second one is going to match it to second pattern the third is going to be matched with the third pattern like likewise your prints are executed whichever is pattern is matching the prints from that pattern gets executed from that case gets executed this is the case not case class case sir what it writes sir do you understand it so this is a, how a pattern matching can be applied on case objects with case classes we can even compare objects and according to that we can extract data and we can do that as some processing on here we are just printing itself but in, in a real time use case we try to compare the objects and we try to extract data and we perform certain processing data processing on the top if that ob object is matching to that case then we we, are, we know that exactly okay we got the exact object what we want and on top of that we extract data and we try to do some data processing here do you understand sir is it clear for all of you actually it's a bit confusing uh I think by practice we can get something. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Because it is confusing because you don't know what is right and what is this inheritance so far. I think it should be Bharat, right? That's why. So you don't need to worry about this part. What is that you can do? You can just concentrate on this. Maybe if you want, we can revisit this topic one more time. Once we finish this uh, triads and uh, which one? Inheritance topic so that at that time it's it's more easy for you it's even more more simple and uh, better to understand but this is how we implement pattern matching with the case cases you know about this match case this uh, you know the switch case concept how we can apply the switch case and this match concept and how do a method returns this we can also apply pattern matching with methods how how to declare it with that and also what is that we have a brief introduction to all this what is the sprite and what is how to extend it what is loose coupling we have got a, you know discussed all these things but only thing is it's not like constructor overloading constructor overloading is a, a different altogether it's a different topic okay 
it's not like that okay it's more or less we can see this more with the inheritance topic okay once we finish inheritance and rights even suppose as you say overloading if you finish that uh, polymorphism then again we will revisit this one pattern matching with the case classes might be one more time we will see that okay but now you can do one thing sir this is the idea about uh, how pattern matching is implemented with the case classes <coughs> what you do sir please test it now as this not everything in this in this program is uh, discussed uh, in our sessions this uh, try it and this extends uh, this inheritance topic is not at discuss we need to talk about it uh, might be that is the gap which uh, you might uh, feel little what is that uh, confused if i am not wrong if there is any confusion point uh, it is due to the gap where we have with inheritance and this try you know method calls you know how to pass objects to methods and how to perform pattern matching all this is fine for us what it right the only thing missing is uh, what is that the connection missing here is uh, with this maybe i can make it more more simple for you instead of try topic see okay leave it try you just declare it because i just want to show you like uh, a real use case like with the how we can extend it let us let us make it simple we'll remove all this sir remove super try okay and then i am not taking a method now so because uh, i am not taking a method it is a method it, it happens like that just to make it much more easier version of this all of you know this right no i have created how many objects here three objects two are case class objects the second one is sorry two are case classes and uh, one is a case object is this is fine for all of you say yes or no sir all of you know this right answer from you sir now you do one thing create object for uh, every entity separately something like uh, var space someone c1 equal to what is that case class one of one comma okay this is one might be if you don't understand let's go to the one level down there c2 case class 2 it takes just one parameter so create a case class object with one parameter third one just a case class object just something to like see and then here the parameter type has to be what type of sorry it has to be what is it case object now all of you know this right i don't think here you have any confusion am i correct yes sir no sir please say some yes sir is there any confusion to this no it's the first clear perfect thank you now let's apply pattern matching now with direct case direct by using these objects directly let's apply pattern matching suppose i take something like result equal to, you know right we need a comparison variable here something like uh, like obj space some match now here what do you do you take case class object what is that case class 1 you know right this is for trying to apply pattern matching for case class objects the first one you can take as you like if i am taking case class 1 means it should take two parameters as per the structure of case class it needs two parameters here this pattern should take two parameters i can take some x comma y here and i am extracting i am doing some extraction here uh, like x plus i am taking both the values into one string concatenating i am not printing here but i am returning this result back to this uh, result maybe if you want you can print it still you, you don't need to return it okay the second one what you can do 
case class object too, and you can take one parameter. This time you need to just return that one parameter. The third time you can take what is that case object. Then you can just say uh, no parameter. Or you can just return what is that case object. Now, is there any confusion in this to all of you? Do you have any confusion here, sir? Remove this value. That's why we are getting error there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay, this can be some C1. Okay, let's take it as C1 now. If it is C1. Then all these objects has to be of a class one. Okay, you now you can see, sir. Now you get some better understanding. Okay, then my all all my objects has to be which type, sir? If I use C1 now, then while doing pattern matching, comparing C1 with the remaining of you know cases, then in that case, as C1 belong to case class one, all the objects has to be what type of case class one. So here also, I just show you. Maybe this gives more clarity to all of you. Some uh, A comma B, uh, and here also some. Uh, this is just an idea. Or okay, some. I'm just taking one more just for that. And we can just return all that. Suppose if I should compare, I should take a pattern matching exclusively comparing with C1. Can you see this now? Maybe let's get more detailed analysis. Maybe. And here also some empty. Just an idea set, that's all. So this is one use case. Second thing, as my parameter is C1, I can exclusively use this uh, uh, case, this, this switch or this match to implement pattern matching with the C1. That is a case class one of this. Okay, when I print result one, whichever is matching to this uh, case class, see this patterns here, okay, X, Y, R, A, B, R, F, G, something, all, all are matching here. There is nothing in this. So now I'm just showing you a quick use case that's all. Now you just print this uh, result here, just run it. Now you got, uh, what is that? Uh, one, two, because might be here, you can add something here. You can directly just show something like uh, what values you are getting, just to get a quick idea. This is one, two. And here also you get one to only, but which is matching? Probably the first one will be matching here. By default, the first one gets executed. And there is no opportunity for the remaining. Maybe we can do it in a different way, the comparison. We can modify it. Can you see this now? This is getting printed. Suppose I want to compare this. What should I do now? I need one more switch case like this. What do I need? Because we have three different objects. Means I need one more switch case. Just, just see the magic. One more switch case here. Now, where result two, and then C two. Then all these objects have, should take one parameter. All this has to take parameters. And uh, in this second pattern, pattern matching, what is the point here? Uh, you don't need Y here. So just take one case. Just take only because it takes only one parameter. Just an idea for all of you, so that you get the exact point. Uh, what is the advantage with the try it for all of you? Okay, then uh, case class two here, case class two, case class two. Okay, so we have broke down this and print result two. Obviously, the first gets matched by default, and uh, what is that? What happens now? We get something like that. Just an idea. You don't need to. Worry about uh, the tuning part. We'll do the tuning. You got one here. 
Similarly, if I should compare third one, what should I do, sir? I need one more pattern matching. And then here I took something like this is a, I think everybody can understand this, correct? C3, you take C3 here, sir. And then here you have to use object, case object here for all that. Case object, something like this, case object. Case object. So it doesn't take parameters. You can simply just give some text there, okay? Just you know, identify. You don't need three three comparisons, three patterns. Okay, one pattern should be enough, but just quick for quick idea, I'm just taking it. So now, all in all, if you look at it, how many I am taking here to compare each case or each each object? I am taking one pattern match. Okay. Will you, will you agree with this, sir? But all of you can understand, this is going to compare with which object? Third object. And by default, as the first one, first case matches in all these pattern matching uh, constructs, sir. by default, we get it from the first case itself because this pattern is going to match with all the remaining objects. So uh, remaining in sense, sir, this object is by default matching with the first pattern. And this object is matching with the first pattern here. This object is going to be matched with the which pattern? The first pattern. And we get objects results from all the first patterns. Now what's happening here? To implement this, to do, do the validation, I use three pattern matching constructs. Okay, one minute. Okay, case underscore. Let us take this. Let us make it more. Okay. I'm tweeting it more. So here I'm just saying case underscore two cases. Because this will by default says that uh, okay. Invalid object. There's something not matching. And same thing here also. You can also apply here as well. Let's tune this so that it makes more sense. Tune here. Now this one. We had discussed already about this construct. Now you see, we can apply the same case for all the remaining three. Suppose if C1 is matching with this, then you get uh, this first one. Otherwise, you get invalid object. Suppose uh, you, you create, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, you can take something with uh, three objects. Uh, yeah then this is not going to work for you. Okay? But anyhow, let me just uh, run this. Can you see here now? So this is what happens here, what you are doing here. To compare these objects, uh, for every object we are taking one, one, one uh, pattern matching construct. So for each object uh, to compare, I took one. And here altogether as I have three objects, I need three pattern matching cases. Correct? Is this clear now? This is how usually you can try to work with what? You can try to work with pattern matching. But for comparing this, how many pattern matching constructs are required here for me? For each one, I need one pattern matching. Correct? Yes, sir. No, sir. Is that clear for all of you? So if you use that, uh, which one? Suppose. You are using this tried concept. Now, if you bring in tried, tried something like a, a super tried something, you can give any name here. Then what's going to happen if you extend it, uh, then I don't need three cases here. Then one parameter can be used to compare with all the remaining uh, objects here. Because here, what is that? Now you understand better. When you say extensor, super tried, same thing you can try for remaining. Super tried and same thing you can do this for the remaining super tried. Okay. Now, before using extending or having this uh, right end uh, subclass concept, if, if I, I had gone with independent objects, you can see, sir, 
I know this is you need little patience to get into this, but still, what is that? For each case, for each object to apply pattern matching, I need one separate constraint, one separate for this, one separate for this, one separate for this. Correct. Suppose if we have a trite approach, if my references are trite type, super trite. Now you can see how simplify we can simplify. See how much you can simplify here. Super trite. Because now you might get some clarity. Super trite. Now I don't need all these many, these many use cases, sir. Not this many is required. Suppose I am bringing this one here to this. And I am bringing even this one to this. Okay. Now remove all this. So what's happening now? If you see, C1 is a super trite type. Now it can match with one of the patterns. Suppose I change it to C2. It can match with any one, any one of the patterns. Suppose I, I change it to C3. It can match with any one of these three patterns because super trite can be any one of these three types. Because I told you clearly, when you have this inheritance implemented here, this uh, trite and subclasses, uh, this parameter C1 and C2 are all belonging to the trite type. So here, I, when I say C1, C1 can, can be any one of these three here. C2 can be any one of these three. C3 can be any one of these three. Suppose if it is not like that, if you are going with independent objects, just now we have seen, I'm going back again for one more time. So what is it? If you are going with this use case, where you have independent objects every time, you can see here, this is the use case. I don't have extents, just observe it, sir. I know you don't need try it as well. So what is it now? Every time to do the comparison, here all the classes should belong to of what type, sir? So in the first case, sir, I can have this is C1 is, uh, what is that? Uh, the object here is a C1 and it has to be only what type? Uh, you should take parameter of this X, Y. Suppose I give to C2 here. What's happening? Immediately I'm seeing an error here. Can you see here? Why? Because in this pattern matching, this is exclusively applied only to compare or do pattern matching with the, this kind of construct, not with this. Are you following what I'm trying to explain, sir? Are you getting this, sir? When I change it, when I try to compare with C2, immediately I got an error. Suppose you use C3, you get an error. Why? As there is uh, no loose coupling implemented here, every object is a separate object. We don't have, what is that? The dependency of one object on another is high, so that what happens? When I change the comparison parameter, immediately I'm seeing an error because when I take C3, this is applicable only when the pattern patterns are belonging to case object. And this won't work here because my patterns here are belonging to this first, first object. Are you following, sir? Similarly, you can, if you go and test for this one, this pattern matching exclusively is used to apply for what? The second object, to test the second object, not for the first one. You cannot bring in the first one and uh, try to compare. Suppose I, I, I say C1, then it won't work here, sir. Why? Because C1 is a, a, altogether a different kind of pattern. So that pattern cannot be used as a case pattern in this uh, Constant. Are you trying to get what I'm trying to explain, sir? And third one, you take here, again C1, it won't work for C1, C2, but it works for only C3, where your uh, cases are belonging to which one, sir? This case object. Are you getting here? Means what is happening in this case, sir? as they are not uh, having any common implementation, and they are individual objects. But to do the pattern matching on each object, I need a separate uh, case construct here. And I need a separate case construct for second object, separate case construct for third object uh, to do pattern matching. Suppose when you have that, uh, what is that? The other one, what is it? Posi. 
closure model. So then what's happening there? Then it is giving me an opportunity for what, sir? So we can have all this uh, implemented uh, in one, one uh, construct and the reference, if you see when I try to change the reference, still it's working for me. When, when you are implementing here, what is that? Try it and extending uh, these subclasses from try it. So what's happening here? You know, with one parameter, I am able to compare with all the remaining patterns because they belongs to a type here. That is a try type here. That's super try type. Got it right. This involves what when you have a, a try it and a extending from try it. What is that going to bring us? This approach bring us what? Bring us nothing but a, a loose coupling approach. Also, your pattern match matching becomes much more meaningful with this kind of a implementation. I know we have gone little too far. I, I'm not sure right uh, how, how far you are clear with this. Can I get an S from home? Is this fine now or still it's confusing to you? Is it clear, sir, for all of you? Yeah, clear, Manohar. So now still, still that uh, confusion is there or uh, is it clear now? No, I got it clear. It's fine for me. Just get with the other uh, team. Yeah, you need to understand that try it and uh, that uh, what is that inheritance as well to get uh, more into this uh, topic. Okay. Is this fine uh, for all of you, sir? Deepak, Harish, Madhu, Srikan, Suresh, Prasad. All of you are good with this? It's a little yes, deeper sir. here. Uh, uh, can you go to the code, sir? Oh, no. No? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just my doubt is when C1, because it has two parameters, so first one X, Y is matched, so it will get that result, right? No, actually, we should change this. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, whenever, you... whenever the two parameters matches, the obviously we'll get the first result. So uh, even a uh, second, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. We we have to add this uh, super right uh, this thing here. Then okay, yeah. Then it will work for us. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We should just need to explain that. that makes more sense for us. Are you following all of you? Now, now you can uh, change this. The third one you can make it as a, what is that case? Yes. Now it works. Okay. Yeah. to this case class one case class two case object yeah thank you sir okay the reference here you have to add it as a so, so far the reference type has to be declared as what type of Okay. And here also, this has to be declared as what, sir? Got it now? Yes, sir. So this makes sense for us. This time, this would work. Now, you, you change it for C2 or C1 or C2 or C3. The same pattern is can be used to implement this uh, comparison here. Got it? Uh, is, is, uh, if we have C1, uh, multiple like a class C1, A, comma B, then uh, obviously it will print only X, Y, right? Correct. Suppose if now you have to change yourself. Suppose if you take a method, then you don't have that problem. If you are using it in a method, then we can, uh, we can call a method and we, we can keep passing objects. That's what, that is the better tune. That is better way of tuning your code, okay? And by better way of playing pattern matching with method. 
uh, one minute, Manohar. Actually, if if we have uh, x comma y, I mean the same patterns. If we have multiple of them, so what are the first matches? It will give that result. Yes, suppose, suppose C1, you have C1, now C1 is matching and, with first pattern, then it will return that that that. No, no. Another case class one a comma b, and if we give x only x, then it will give uh, the first one result only, right? Correct, because this is. Yeah. C1 is going to match with what pattern? Uh, no, I want to have one more case class one of a comma b. I, I have multiple. Uh, suppose I have multiple patterns with the case class one. So See, it will. Uh, you take how many hour like this, sir? But what is that? Uh, this is not different from the first. Uh, first one, yeah. So obviously, when well, no, first matches, it will give print that result. Got that, sir. Whenever a case gets matched, that, that that case will be executed and it will stop there itself. And, stop that. Yeah. And this, this, even so this doesn't have any use here. This is not, not yes, necessary yes. here because already this is comparing here itself, and uh, it, it doesn't come to this point at all. There is no meaning to have this here. Got it right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Any more questions, sir? So that, uh, this is about what is the uh, this pattern matching okay with the case classes understood okay guys uh, stop here we will continue in the next lecture okay thank you we'll see again we'll see with uh, once we finish rights and inheritance we'll come back to this example one more. We'll revisit it later, okay? See you.